So we see God's first uh, big um, act of judgment in the flood. And I'm not going to talk about the flood other than that's um, uh, just uh, an example of how uh, God judges. So I'm just saying that, um, you know, I used to grow up thinking that everything would always get better. I used to grow up thinking that, hey, you know, our society is just going to um, go on and on and on. And uh, it's only going to get better. Technology gets better. Health is getting better. And, uh, you know, we only have good times ahead. And you know what? When you start reading the Word of God, you learn that that it's not necessarily the case. You learn that um, uh, nations come and go. You learn that, you know, uh, bad things happen. And so uh, he woke me up from my slumber, helping me to see things differently. Um, that, you know, if you watch Disney enough, and that's all you watch, you, you learn about life uh, uh, living happily ever after. It's all about, about fairy tales. Um, it's out of the context of God. There is no God in Disney films. And I'm just using them for example. It's not just Disney, but it's not reality. It's, it's all fantasy. When you read the Word of God, you see, you see life, you see creation, you see um, good things happening, but you see uh, men who do wicked that screw it all up. And there's a lot of bad endings in the Word of God, a lot of bad endings. And it's because people have forgotten their God. It's because people just go their own way. And that's why we need Christ. When you get to the New Testament, we're desperately for him. Job was crying out for a mediator. He had no idea what God had planned in Jesus. So all I'm saying, my friends, is um, that's why the Bible is in desperate need. The Old Testament is in desperate need because it's been neglected in many churches today, which gives us a bigger picture of what God's doing. So my next example of uh, judgment is Sodom and Gomorrah, Genesis 18. So uh, I'd like to give out, I'd love people to uh, join me in uh, reading of the scriptures. So if you be so kind, if you have a Bible open, I'd love for you to join me in reading some of these. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, six uh, very small scriptures, and we're going to discuss Sodom and Gomorrah. Um, starting in, in Genesis 18, who, who wants to read Genesis 18, read it. verses 20 and 21? Right. Hold who? on. 18, what? 18, Genesis 18, verses 20 and 21. And I will go down now and see what is done all together according to the outcry against it that has come to me. If not, I will know. Then the man turned away okay. from there and went with Sodom. When Abraham okay, that's before the Lord. That's good. That's that's enough, Pastor John. I just wanted twenty and twenty-one. Who'd so like to read for me Lamentations four verse six? I have. I, if you want to look these up, Lamentations four verse six, Ezekiel sixteen, verse forty-eight and forty-nine. Ezekiel 6, okay, Brooke, Ezekiel 16, 48, 49, thank you. Matthew, Matthew 11, 23 and 24, who wants to read that? 11, 23 and 24. Okay, yeah, Matthew 11, 23 and 24, thank you. And Luke 12, who would like to read from Luke 12, just 47, 48. I'll read it. Okay, Betty. Uh, Luke 12, 47, 48. So I'll start with uh, Lamentations. Um, Pastor John read from Genesis. Um, the Lord said, I'm going down to see if their actions are as wicked as I have heard. And then we're going to do a little study here in Sodom and Gomorrah. Lamentations 4, 6. Remember, these are Jeremiah's Lamentations for a, a, uh, a judged Jerusalem, for a Jerusalem that is um, completely burned and destroyed. So this is what part of his lamentation. The guilt of my people is greater than that of Sodom, where utter disaster struck in a moment and had and no hand offered help. So there's there's a, an example for uh, for judgment, and uh, and in in Lamentations four six, Jeremiah is saying the guilt of my people is greater than that of Sodom. 
So I know that Sodom and Gomorrah, that could have happened to anybody, really. And it just so happened, I think, that God used them as an example. It's not that their sin was so great that it was worse than anyone else's. Because clearly in Lamentations, um, Jeremiah is saying the guilt of my people is greater than that of Sodom. So I just want to make this clear. We like to make Sodom and Gomorrah out to be an example um, of, of God's judgment. And uh, let me tell you, it wasn't that they were any any less guilty than, than, than even Judah was. Okay, Brooke, read Ezekiel 16, 48, 49. As I live, declares the Lord God, Sodom, your sister, and her daughters have not done as you and, and your daughters have done. Behold, this was the guilt of your sister Sodom. She and her daughters had arrogance, abundant food, and careless ease, but she did not help the poor and needy. Okay, thank you. So, to me, my, yeah, arrogance, um, and uh, a great amount of food and ease. My my translation says Sodom's sins were pride, gluttony, and laziness. And I believe what happens because notice that homosexuality is not listed here as one of their sins. And um, I think you might argue that, but here's the thing: they've been prideful, gluttonous, laziness for a, a, you you you, you got to believe for a while that uh, things didn't happen overnight, just like in our nation. So all I'm saying is that these, what, what, what the cries were all about was the poor and the needy suffered outside her door. And when, when I read Romans chapter 1, um, it's, it's only after God has given a nation up, only after God has given a nation over to the lust of their desires, do we see homosexual activity? That's how I see it. It is more of a symptom than the core problem because our problem's been going on for many years. It's not like just because of uh, the Supreme Court's decision, oh, no, uh, we have a problem. No, the problem's been here for, for uh, you, know, you know, at least a century is my argument. Um, Matthew 11, 23 and 24, please. And you people of Capernaum, Will you be honored in heaven? No, you will go down to the place of the dead. For if the miracles I did for you had been done in wicked Solomon, it would still be here today. I tell you, even Solomon, Sodom would be better off on Judgment Day than you. Okay, here's another example. Jesus is making it very clear that if, if the miracles he did for, for, for the people of Capernaum if he did them in wicked Sodom, it would still be there. It wouldn't be judged. It's just like um, because God sent Jonah to preach to the Ninevites, they, they were saved. They repented. So, again, uh, even Jesus is putting Sodom in the proper perspective. So, uh, Betty, Luke 12, please. Okay. Luke. Uh, 47 to 48. I'm reading from the interna- New International Version. Okay. 47. That servant who knows his master's will and does not get ready or does not do what his master wants will be beaten with many blows. Well, but the one who does not know and does things deserving punishment will be beaten with few blows. <laughs> from everyone who has been given much, much will be demanded. And from the one who has been given entrusted with much, much more will be asked. Okay. So this is a really popular verse. Thank you, Betty, for, for reading that. Um, so when, when someone has been entrusted with much, even more will be required. That's exactly what um, Jesus is saying to the, you know, the people of Capernaum. Um, this is a um, pretty gen- general um, lesson in all of Scripture. If you've been giving much, given much, you have much responsibility. So just remember that. So this puts, I think, Sodom and Gomorrah in the perspective uh, that it needs to be. Um, I'm going to read briefly about the Canaanites, and then I'd like someone to read um, about the judgment of, of Egypt in Isaiah 19. If someone wants to find Isaiah 19, I'm going to read um, out of Leviticus 18 um, about judgment for the Canaanites. And these are the people 
that, um, you know, the uh, Perizzites and the Jebusites and the Canaanites, had, that the, uh, the people of Israel uh, were told to kill and destroy when they entered the Promised Land. So in Leviticus 18, verses 24 and 25, do not defile yourselves in any of these ways, for the people I am driving out before you have defiled themselves in all these ways. Because the entire land has become defiled, I am punishing the people who live there. I will cause the land to vomit them out. Okay? So the Canaanites are being judged because of sexual immorality. Because it's, if you read all of Leviticus 18, it talks about all the, the, the do nots in terms of sexuality. This is uh, incest. It covers bestiality. It covers homosexuality. It covers everything. So, I mean, let's face it. We've had adulterous uh, affairs, you know, for the longest time, and, and they're not nearly as, uh, as, as looked down upon as, as other things. Um, you know, pedophilia is another example. Um, that's, that's even gaining uh, uh, popularity today within, you know, certain segments. So all I'm saying is this is why the Canaanites were judged. This is, to me, the biggest reason why, um, the God, uh, why God had his Israelites kick them out of the land, because they're, they're, they have defiled themselves in these ways. We've been defiling ourselves in many ways uh, for, for, for a number of decades. So we'll pick that up in a little bit. Who, who would like to read Isaiah uh, chapter 19? I can read it. I'm there. Okay, Pastor John. I'd like you to read from 1 through 17. Okay, can do. Read from the New King James. The burden against Egypt. Behold, the Lord rides on a swift cloud and will come into Egypt. The idols of, e- idols of Egypt will totter at his presence. And the heart of Egypt will melt in its midst. I'll set Egyptians against Egyptians. Everyone will fight against his brother, and everyone against his neighbor. City against thing, city, kingdom against kingdom. The spirit of Egypt will fall in its midst. I will destroy their council, and they will consult the idols and the charmers, the mediums and the sorcerers. And the Egyptians I will give into the hand of a cruel master. And a fierce king will rule over them, says the Lord of hosts. The Lord will rule the host. The waters will fall from the sea, but fell from the sea. And the river will be wasted and dried up. The rivers will turn foul. The brooks of defense will be emptied and dried up. The reeds and rushes will wither. The papyrus reeds by the river, by the mouth of the river, and everything sown by the river will wither being driven away, and be no more. The fishermen also will mourn, and those will lament, who cast hooks into the river, and they will languish, who spread nets on the waters. Moreover, those who work in the fine flax, and those who weave fine fabric, will be ashamed, and its foundations will be broken. All who make wages will be troubled of soul. Surely the princes of Zoan are fools, Pharaoh's wise counselors give foolish counsel. How do you say in Pharaoh, I am the son of the wise, the son of ancient kings? Where are they? Where are your wise men? Let them tell you now. And let them know what the Lord of hosts has proposed against Egypt. The princes of Zoan have become fools. The princes of Noth are deceived. They have also deluded Egypt those who are the mainstay of his tribe. The Lord has mingled a perverse spirit in their midst, and they have escaped Egypt to err in all the works, or caused uh, Egypt to err in all the works, as a drunken man staggers in his vomit. Neither will there be any work for Egypt, which, uh, which the head or tail, palm branch or bulrush may do. In that day, Egypt will be like women, and will be afraid and fear because of the waving of the hand of the Lord of hosts, which he waves over it. And the land of Judah will be a terror to Egypt. Everyone who makes mention of it will be afraid in himself because of the counsel of the Lord of hosts, which he has determined against it. 
Amen. Thank you. So imagine if God is saying this now about us. The waters of the Nile will fail to rise and flood the field. The riverbed will be parched and dry. Can anyone relate to a parched land? 2011, Texas was barren. I mean, we had we had crops dying. We had uh, livestock dying because we had no rain. It was one of the worst droughts we've had in a very long time. And, of course, we don't know exactly what God's doing, but I think, well, my friends, when we read these verses, I, I, I don't know how we could remove God's hand. Remember, he's the one that gives providence. It's not just some happenstance that it doesn't rain for an extended period of time. That means God has withdrawn his, his, his water. And should disaster befall us, are we, to, are we to say, God, where were you? Are we to just uh, draw it up to, oh, I guess the weather's really bad this year. I guess we're going to have catastrophe in, uh, in hurricanes. Um, God is intimately, intimately involved in these nations. And we're just reading one example in Egypt that um, didn't want to obey God. I will make Egyptian fight against Egyptian, brother against brother, neighbor against neighbor, city against city, province against province. See, we usually think of only Israel as far as, um, you know, God's example with people. But I'm telling you, all throughout the Old Testament, God is dealing with this nation, that nation, and and judging accordingly. And so uh, we can see this today, brother against brother, neighbor against neighbor. We don't really see city against city yet, but that could happen. <laughs> I mean, we're going in uncharted territory as far as I'm concerned. Um, you know, and when we, we, when we think of politicians, uh, I, I think of verse 11, what fools are the officials and so on. Their best counsel to the king of Egypt is stupid and wrong. We're seeing a lot of stupid counsel on, 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 all, on all sides politically. Um, all I'm saying is, Verse 14, the Lord has sent a spirit of foolishness on them. So all their suggestions are wrong. So do we really think if we only voted the right people in the office that everything would be okay? The Lord sent a spirit of foolishness. It doesn't matter who we put in office. Because God appoints those people. That's a lesson that I'm not even going to cover today. God appoints our rulers. That makes it clear. He makes it clear in the Old Testament. He, he makes it clear in the New Testament. Our, our, our leaders aren't there just because not enough people voted for the other guy. God appoints our leaders. And he also makes them foolish. And they become wicked because they, they don't do what God would have. They don't honor God. So this, this whole thing, the good thing out of this, it's going to force our church to come together. And yes, it might bring persecution. And so be it. Our, our, our uh, apostle fathers, uh, you know, the, the first disciples, they faced a lot of persecution. So we'll be in good company if that happens. Don't lose heart. So here's the case of Egypt and how God dealt with Egypt. Just another country. They're just any other country. Nothing special about Egypt. Other nations include um, Edom, Assyria, Tyre. I don't. I, I could. I could have took in 20 pages uh, when when it comes to judgment. I mean, it, it, if you're familiar with all of the Old Testament, God goes on and on and on about how He judges this nation, this nation, that nation. He judged Tyre specifically, being a, a great city that it was. Um, and then and then we get to Nineveh. Um, the the uh, I think it's the Assyrians. And this is, uh, I think, 50 years prior to their judgment was when Jonah reluctantly went. Um, of course, after after being in the well for three days, he, you know, God gave him an offer he couldn't refuse. Um, so he he goes to Nineveh, he preaches the message, and they repent. So I mean, it's, it's really funny here. We see all this judgment, but um, but you know, when you when you read the Old Testament, you you get the idea that God is patient. 
And and God could have easily destroyed Nineveh as he did Sodom and Gomorrah. So he used Sodom and Gomorrah as an example of his judgment. And then he used Nineveh as an example of his grace. Because they deserved judgment all the same. Because they were a wicked people, the people of Nineveh. And and because Jonah went, um, gave them the good news, as we should be doing day, you know, daily with people, um, or, you know, however it works out for you um, to, to preach, to, to – not, not, I'm not telling you to preach. I'm telling you to just give people um, you know, the, the notion that God is good and tell, tell them that they have a choice – to be in peace with God, that they can be reconciled to God should they repent and turn to him. So all I'm saying is uh, Nineveh does this, and we, we are modeled a very wicked, very secular nation of the Ninevites that they can turn. So this is the hope that we have, that regardless of uh, uh, the judgment that God offers, there's always, there's always,